So Qualcomm. Uh, so uh, one thing that that a lot of people don't well, most of what Qualcomm does, people, excuse me, don't necessarily have visibility on because I think we're aware of the Snapdragon mobile platform and all of the Snapdragon related products. We're aware that they have really good modems and that they're very active in R and D for for five G, uh, and they contribute to a lot of the standards and so on and so forth. Um, but something that as uh, as an analyst who's been following them for a while and being pretty immersed in their universe. Uh, there, there's something that I've noticed is that they they have these these test beds, essentially these kind of these warehouses where not only do they test new technologies, new techniques, new methodologies to optimize 5G networks and and all of the equipment that goes with it, um, but they also use them as as demos. And so uh, there are demos for industry partners. Obviously, Ron has touched on the fact that this is a very rich ecosystem of companies on, on the one hand competing against each other, but also all working together um, because there's so many layers to this and so many moving pieces that they all have to kind of you know put all the pieces together for their clients, for their customers. And in the case of, of private 5G networks, that adds a few more layers of complexity on the front end because you don't just subscribe to a service that a carrier has provided for you. You kind of have to build stuff from scratch. Um, and so these, these demos are always out there and periodically Qualcomm will update the market on what's new. Um, and typically there's an analyst day. There's usually one or two a year where they bring tech journalists, analysts, and some influencers even uh, to their headquarters in San Diego to kind of tour some of these test beds and, and see what's, what's going on and actually see it live. And with, uh, with COVID and travel being restricted for the last year and a half, um, that has moved to kind of a more virtual uh, uh, presentation. And, and I think that some of it gets missed because there's just so much news out there and so much, so much churn. And so many of these companies doing stuff like this now that, that, um, a lot of our audience may have missed, uh, some of what's, uh, what's been happening at Qualcomm and what's coming down the pipe, um, in terms of, uh, private, uh, 5G network, and especially for, uh, industry 4.0 applications. So I'm, I'm currently writing three pieces on this, which we'll publish uh, on our website in the next week or week or so. So look for that. But a couple of points that I wanted to mention so people are aware of them um, is that when we talk about private 5G networks, just like public 5G networks, this isn't a fixed target. Um, the, the technologies, the optimizations, the capabilities are going to keep improving and they're going to keep improving every few months. Um, and so, for instance, one of the things that, that um, attracted my, my attention when I was doing research on, on these new test beds is that uh, Qualcomm is, is already um, working on optimizing a thing called TSN. Uh, time-sensitive networking. And what that allows industries to do is provide microsecond-level synchronization uh, of all their devices. So imagine that you have uh, a warehouse, a modern warehouse with robots essentially kind of uh, driving things around. Like the sh you don't go to the shelves anymore necessarily. The shelves can come to you. Right. So it could be an Amazon warehouse. It could be any warehouse, any sorting center um, where you're going to have uh, automated uh, uh, guided vehicles. This, this micro uh, um, time-sensitive networking, microsecond level synchronization allows all these things to work better in concert. Um, so that the level of complexity that's, that's required for everything to work together so things don't run into each other, so you don't have problems, is improving. Uh, also, what I'm seeing is uh, a push for side link capacity. So that allows the devices to not only talk to the network, uh, in real time with very low latency, but also talk to each other, which I think is a really important layer yeah. when we're talking about private 5G networks, especially in industry 4.0. Um, and there's also indoor precision positioning, uh, which is also getting super, super good. So you have centimeter level accuracy um, to, uh, to be able to track all of your, uh, your AGVs, your automated guided vehicles in that environment. Mm -hmm. um, but also something that, that we don't talk about enough, I think, in terms of 5G network optimization is power consumption. 
So we talk about power consumption on in the IoT and the IoT in terms of the device itself using low power so that it can run a lot longer uh, on, um, uh, on, on the same charge. But we're also now starting to see 5G networks become optimized for essentially become greener. Um, and so some of the test beds that, that I was uh, researching uh, show new methodologies for end-to-end -end system techniques that can compensate for uh, power amplification issues, uh, especially nonlinear uh, nonlinearity. That's a tough one to, to say for a Frenchie. Um, <laughs> So, so essentially what it does is um, it, it creates new optimizations for networks. And, and especially this is going to be very useful for private networks where every, every ounce of power counts. And it's also a huge cost issue uh, when, when you're running a plant uh, or whether it's the plant itself or the network that you're running through the plant. Uh, networks are able to become a lot greener now through these optimizations, through these new power efficiencies. Mm -hmm. So anyway, Qualcomm cool. is working on all this stuff. Uh, they have really interesting things to share. Uh, and so look for three articles on this uh, in the next couple of weeks from me. Absolutely. We're excited about that.